There was a briefing on Wednesday, I think, from the, uh, from the Federal Executive Council meeting. After the Federal Executive Council meeting, the Minister for Information did tell us that the President has sent a delegation of ministers uh, to, the, to Yobe State to find out precisely what was going on. Uh, what are you hoping that that, I mean, as a citizen, of course, and perhaps as a movement, uh, that that delegation will be able to find out from Yobe? I'm hoping they will, be, they, will, they will be able to find out that the girls are safe and back with their parents as, 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 a, as a citizen. I'm hoping that all this is, is a kind of, it's a dream that we we'll all wake from and it, it, it isn't a reality. And I'm wondering, what is the president doing in Abuja? Why is he still staying there? Why isn't he with parents? He's the father of this nation. When things like this happen, he should be there. Let, let, let them do, let him speak authoritatively that he will get our girls back. We need leadership at this moment. It's not just to set up a committee. If we shouldn't be looking at things, oh, let's, do, okay, it's Nigerian, let's set up a committee and then we we'll see how it goes. Is we are this, talking about is children. This is this a committee, because some people will say that the first, he has to get as much information as he can get before he eventually goes there. I mean, in terms I of. I don't what, agree he what? needs information to go and empathize with parents who are grieving right now. He's standing there with them and telling them, looking into their eyes and saying to them, we will do all we can to bring back our daughters. It's enough. It will give them hope. And it will mean that every life in this country matters. Because right now it seems as if some Nigerians are more Nigerian than other Nigerians. And that's not acceptable. What does it take? Then after the visit, the president can go and set up the committee he needs to set up and for them to do what they need to do. The security agencies, issue right now as we're taking, are other schools secured? Are other schools secured? What have we? What, what has been put in place to ensure that every school in Nigeria is, is secured in such a way that nobody will think about going in to do something? Because by the time we do nothing and we keep joking with our lives, we just give enabling environment, enabling uh, conditions for, for for terrorists and every person who doesn't mean us well to come and attack us. I was going to ask you: Is your movement, is the Bring Back Our Girls movement? now going to take on this this case as well are you looking to you know be a voice f of advocacy for the dap chick girls as well bring back our girls movement have always been about girls that we are uh, those that we abducted before chibo girls and after chibo girls the fact is that the chibo girls they are a symbol of all of those that were abducted because there we could verify. Recently you saw the Lhasa women and the unit made lecturers until Bring Back Our Girls uh, took on the issue. Nothing was really said about them. And we called their rescue. We were happy about that. So the dark girls, of course, they are our citizens. Every Nigerian citizen that is missing, the Bring Back Our Girls movement will stand for that today as long as we have identity. Moving forward, what, what what would you want to see from the federal government in terms of uh, collaboration and cooperation uh, with groups like yours uh, so that everybody can be on the same page and you don't have discordant tunes uh, in terms of if you're a Nigerian listening and analyzing the situation, discordant tunes coming from different sides of, of the spectrum. What do you think can be done? What I think can be done is for the federal government to understand that when movements like ours come and make demands on them, we are not we are, it, it is not, we are not being antagonistic to them. We are just saying that we believe in our government and we know they can. And so we are all ready to work together to ensure that we get what, what is supposed to be done right. Because at the end of the day, this is our country. And we all have to work together to ensure the progress of our country. So first of all, have, they should have an open mind. And then they should be ready to work with citizens. When it comes to information gathering, when it comes to uh, uh, manpower, when it comes to uh, the people just coming together, because we need to have that trust. And repeatedly over the years, we have sent different documents to, to, to the federal government. The last one we sent was the option notes on the re reconstruction of the Northeast. We have done a lot of documents that we have said that because we want our nation to move forward. We want good governance. We don't want to repeat. And we have been saying this since 2014 that we don't want a repeat of Chibo to happen. And here we are today talking about that, Chi. It's so sad. It is very sad and worrisome indeed. Well, we're seeing tweets here, uh, someone saying that, you know, perhaps boarding schools should be abolished in the north. Is it a recommendation that you would support for now, especially in the northeast of the country? That's, that's, that, I, I, don't, I don't even know. Because if you say body school should be abolished, so what now happens? What, are those, what about those that are far away? Let's look at uh, Buniyadi. Uh, On the 25th of this month, February, it will be four years that the school was attacked and students, 29 students were slaughtered in their school. 
as of two years, a year after, the government didn't say anything, anything until the Bring Back Our Girls movement did a memorial. And we still have students that are displaced. Some of them had to be taken on by private citizens. So if you now close down, shut down boarding schools, what happened? How are they going to be taken to, or, uh, to, to, to be put in schools? But then, if we get to a place where we, the security can no longer be secure, life comes first. But we must remember something. The Boko Haram literally means education is forbidden. We cannot allow them to win. We must ensure that our children go to school. Like that Chibo father who said government used to find them. If it has to be closed, then we pull, must put all we can to ensure that their children are in school and they are getting the needed education for us to have development in this country, for them to be developed. We cannot allow the terrorists to win by coming in to attack us and then taking away the fundamental right to education that our children have. Mm. We've seen the governor of Yobe State visit. We're going to see a presidential ministerial uh, visit to Yobe State as well, especially to Dapchi community, well, hopefully or most likely. Um, but going forward, I mean, these kind of things have the great chances of getting cold. How would you suggest that the people of Dapchi ensure that this matter remains on the front burner? They should, they should come together. They should ensure their voices are heard. They, they, they let them look at what the Bring Back Our Girls movement has done. For almost four years, we've come out every day, every day, to, to, to demand for the rescue of Archibaldus and all other abductees. And so they must ensure that they are talking about it, they are coming out. We as a movement, definitely, we would. They are our children. We must talk about uh, Dapchi girls, uh, Dapchi girls and all of that. But you see one thing that is so, it's so, it's so painful. Like I said at the beginning of this program, we didn't learn from 2014. We have repeatedly heard that in the case of kidnappings and abduction, the first 48 hours, very critical. And in that 48 hours, we seen it was more about statements and all of that, rather than on investigation to actually find out how many of guests are missing or, or un unaccounted for and whether they've been brought back. But one thing is that we must understand is that when we come out to demand for our girls or any other abductees, and if we come out to demand for Dapchi, we are not doing them a favor. We are only doing that which is right. They ought not to have been abducted in the first place. They ought to have been protected. And the next best thing to do is to ensure that they are rescued immediately and brought back to their parents. Mm -hmm. Right now, no matter what, they do, emotionally, they'll, they'll be scared for a very long time, if not for life. To, have, to be taken away from your school, it's not easy. And it's, it's something that is, it, is terrifying. And right now, we don't know the state in which our children are. The fear that they are going, they are going through. 2014 happened. We've seen a lot of abduction in other states in Nigeria. Now we have that this large scale. So we need to do something about it beyond the visit. It's not about visit, right? Uh, it's about action. I, I think that nobody. I mean, everybody will definitely agree with you on that. Aisha Yusufo, co-convener, bring back our girls. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this Thank morning. You for well, it's important to state again that we did reach out to the defense spokesperson to try and give some clarification on this matter, and also uh, the spokesperson person of the Yobe state government who did promise that he was going to be on the show this morning uh, but till as we speak we're here to hear from him and uh, get any more information as to what precisely is happening in Dapchi in Yobe state.